can I say what a wonderful day to be in Victoria? Of course I'm going to say that because the design, the build, the creation, the knowledge is all retained right here in Melbourne, Victoria. Can I begin by acknowledging the two people that were at the forefront of this wonderful technology? Of course, Dr Elaine Saunders and, of course, Professor Peter Blamey. And I want to pay tribute to the two of you um, for the work that you've done and also for the team that you've led. We also have, as uh, has already been introduced, uh, Amanda Caples, our lead scientist, uh, Professor Linda Christensen, our Vice-Chancellor uh, from Swinburne University, Alexander Subic, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor and good friend of the Victorian Government and what we're trying to do with technology in advanced manufacturing as well, which Professor Subic is uh, obviously leading the front. Councillor Jackie Watts, the Chair of Knowledge City Portfolio for the City of Melbourne. Uh, of course, uh, David Pennington. Uh, I can't say any more about you, Professor Pennington, than's been said already, except to say once again thank you for your tremendous contribution over many decades uh, to making Victoria great, not just here in Australia, but around the world. And of course, we've got Professor Jan Tennant. Continuing that theme of greatness, Jan is a wonderful, wonderful representative of uh, this sector as the CEO of Biomedical Research Victoria. Lindley, who did the introduction, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, something that Lindley mentioned in a moment. And finally, of course, to Jane Facey, who has uh, very graciously been acknowledged as supporting, obviously, the development of why we are here today. And why am I here today? I'm here today because what better way to support a society by being truly inclusive than giving people an opportunity to take part that would otherwise not be able to. Of course, I'm talking about those people that are he uh, hearing impaired. And many of you probably wouldn't know this. In fact, I dare say the majority of you don't know this. But when I was born, I was born with uh, conductive hearing loss. And so from a, a young age, I suffered very strongly the effects. And my mother, who was a primary school teacher her whole career, picked up on it when I was quite young, when apparently at one stage, I think I probably was about three years of age, where I said to mum, I can't see what you're saying. And she thought, oh, that was quite quaint. Uh, I've got my words mixed up. But as a youngster, I'd already compensated for the inability to hear by watching what people were saying. An amazing insight to what children go through and what adults also go through. In fact, without taking over with personal anecdotes, I was over at my father's house last night as the Minister for Innovation, as he is one of my constituents. He asked for some IT assistance at home. <laughs> He did, when I pointed this out to my father last night, he did say, I think I'm a little bit more than a constituent, uh, to which I did agree. And while I was there, and I don't want to embarrass my father, but while I was there, uh, Dad struggled to hear what I was saying, which was an indication for him that he needed to change the battery on his own hearing aids, which he did right in front of me. And it reminded me again about the power of being inclusive. And I spoke about this, believe it or not, in my inaugural speech in Parliament back in December 14, once I was elected. And I talked about how important it was that we as a society don't leave people behind. And here we are today celebrating a product that is going to provide an opportunity for people to not be left behind, but to join with us in things that we take for granted. Now, I said that uh, Lindley Marshall spoke about some of the great inventions that have come out of uh, Melbourne. But let me also talk about the bionic ear which Professor Blamey had a, a role in, uh, in developing the sound processor for. So it's also important to pay tribute to those other inventions that we've also been able to enjoy. But I'm not here today to talk about why Melbourne's fantastic, although we are, or the inventions that we've made, which we have. I'm here to pay tribute to the men and women that have contributed to the product, that have contributed not just to the product of the hearing aid, but also the development of the app. And this is what makes the, uh, the hearing aid such a, an amazing opportunity for people, that they are, as Professor Blamey said, able to self-tune, that they are able to identify wherever they are what it is that they need to assist. When I am in a noisy restaurant, I still have trouble hearing people from one end of the table to the other. In fact, I will often try and sit myself in the middle of the table, not because I like to be the centre of attention, although people in the audience will not be so kind, I'm sure, 
but because otherwise I can't hear what's going on. Even today, I struggle. In fact, I was at a restaurant on Saturday night with friends of mine, and as it happened, I was sitting right at the end of the table, which meant that there were only two people sitting around me that I was able to converse with, because otherwise I was not able to hear the conversations that were taking place, even as much as just one metre away from me, two seats up. So again, uh, being able to pay tribute to the men and women, not just of uh, Blamey Saunders, but also Extel Technologies, RMIT, Swinburne, is why I'm here today. The work that they've done, sure, it's for profit. No, no apologies for that. That's quite OK. But what they're doing is so much more than just that itself. And so what I want to do is pay tribute to all of them for the amazing contribution that they have made in terms of our proud history in Victoria, both in terms of our manufacturing, our world, our world leading engineers, and of course, our advanced medical research as well. And lastly, if you don't realise how great this product is, let me take it off and show you, for I've been giving you my speech while using it. Unbeknownst to all of you, you weren't able to see it, but I can assure you that I've been hearing the, the clicks of the camera as they go. It has amplified much more for me and made it much more accessible to me, even with my hearing, and yet it's not designed for me as a user. There is much for us to be thankful for. Professor Blamey, to you, to, of course, Dr Saunders, to you and your teams, I say thank you. And, and I welcome you to now a wonderful list of companies here in Victoria that have truly made the world a much better place to live in for people here at home and also abroad. Many thanks. <laughs>